there and watch you work with Shaquille because I understood that this was a, a, a big kid. He was a wonderful, joyful kid. He was only 27 years old. And you had Kobe who was just focused on being better than Michael and quiet and introverted. Sort of like, like, like you when, when you don't say much. Um, <laughs> but you say so much. You say so much. It's amazing. He can just look at you and, and then look down at the end of the bench and then look back at you. <laughs> you score six straight. <laughs> Anything that happens. Um, when you came to the squad, and because we're in Los Angeles, I want to talk about that. I read in the second championship, going for your second championship, how crazy and tumultuous it was with Shaq and Kobe. How did you handle it? For Kobe, it was like his first year was like, I don't know if I'm going to be a Hall of Fame player if I'm only averaging 19 points a game. Shaq's averaging 30. He calls up Jerry West and says, how did you and Elgin both score 30 points a game during your careers? They, they must have done it four or five years consecutively. They averaged 30 plus points a game, those two guys. And Jerry's telling him, you know, we had a lot of shots in those days. You know, everybody just came down and shot the ball. It was a 24 second clock was the, you know, that was the end of the time period. No one ever got to 24 second violations in those days. Now it's all about defense and, and whatnot. And don't worry about this. He calls me up and tells me, you know, you have this conversation with Kobe Bryant. So I know that Kobe's itching to score, and when he comes back the second year, he's determined that he's going to be, you know, in the scoring. And he shot a thousand jump shots a day, and he's, you know, he's just he's going to come out and score. So it's a, a battle of wills that are going on, and so I just kind of let it play out, and I kind of let the two opposing forces have a little bit of a, a by play, and then things sway back and forth between these two, and. You know, one would get taped by one trainer and the other one wouldn't go to that trainer. He had to have his own trainer tape as they closed. <laughs> and one group had a series of press guys they'd talk to and the other guy wouldn't talk to those press guys. And it, so it was like this kind of bickering war that was going on that was like almost child stuff and, you know, teenage stuff. But ultimately, injuries happened and Kobe had to sit out for three weeks at the end of the season. And in the process, we were able to talk and we were able to do some things and the team continued to win enough. Oh, I should mention one other story. During that period of time, um, we went to Minnesota to play a ball game and uh, before Kobe was injured. And we'd had a little lead, eight, 10 point lead. And then Kobe had done a little bit of his thing. He went off a little bit on his own uh, idea, tried to score a few times, hadn't been successful. He got back in the game, we're only up by four, two, coming in the locker room. Ronnie Harper, one of our stalwart veterans, says, hey, young fella, don't try to do it by yourself. You know, we're here to help. We'll do it together, okay? And that lights up Kobe's butt, and he just lits into him, lit into him. I'm in the coach's room, and I hear this Noise going on, I come out and I, what's going on here? And, you know, then I get told, I said, you know, Kobe, really? <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is a team game. And, and so, anyway, the injury happens to Kobe, misses three weeks, and he comes back and he plays the greatest ball, and we have the greatest run that any team's ever had in a finals. I think we were, uh, we lost one game out of our last 26 in the course of that year. Um, so that let me know that they know how to do it together. It's just, you know, bending their will and bending their ego to doing it together. So it wasn't that you just sit there and do nothing like people think. That... <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I know. I, I, he sits there and, and, you know, on his high chair, and a lot of people say he doesn't get up and do anything. In the book, when you read in the book, it's because Phil, when he does yell, does it in practice. And the one time, I, only one time, I saw you mad, I'm gonna say mad. I saw you uh, a little bit hyped twice. One was uh, you literally grabbed Travis Knight's jersey and, <laughs> and you elbowed him showing somebody how to post up and Travis was hurt, for, we were gonna sue you. I got the lawyer and everything. <laughs> 
But the other time is when you came in the locker room and you put it in the book and you throw the Gatorade bottle in the room against the wall. And you made me nervous. <laughs> and I know that you're, you know that you're not crazy. When do you know to use that kind of motivation? Well, these, the, the thing with the Laker team at that time was they had a lot of fun. Shaq is a, a guy that has so much fun. Um, I don't know if this is the year they decided to come into practice naked after he's late or not, but yeah, that's <laughs> that's the type of thing he would do just to create a good laugh for the whole team. <laughs> he had his sneakers on, by the way. He wasn't totally naked. Well, at least he was wearing rubbers. Yes. <laughs> um. <laughs> So anyway, they, <laughs> we went into Phoenix, we won two games at home, we go to Phoenix, we win the third game in Phoenix, and there's a motorcycle that's rented for Shaq, there's, you know, and I have, a, you know, um, got a theater that's across the street from where we were staying in Phoenix at the Ritz-Carlton which is playing Spartacus to empty it so that we can come in and watch Spartacus on Gladiator. an off day. And about three guys show up. Well, Gladiator, because Spartacus. Oh, sorry, yeah, Gladiator. Yeah. Boy, that dates me, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs>